what was the thought process behind you choosing to write on the bhagavad gita yeah that's a good question uma i if you had uh, the bhagavad gita for children i mean the gita for children came out in 2015 and even in 2013 if you had told me that i would one day write a retelling of the gita for in a child friendly manner i would have laughed you know appropriately and i would have said there's absolutely no way i'm going to write about the uh, gita because i knew very little about it i hadn't engaged with the text myself in any kind of deep manner at all and it was so um, you know i i i it was so serendipitous how it came uh, it was just my editor actually so i had finished writing this tara not the fantasy adventure series that you talked about for children which had taken me some Uh, four years to write because there were eight books in the series, and I had finished that, and I was feeling sort of fictioned out. You know, I said, "I've done so much fiction, I cannot write anymore because the Taranot series is very exciting, and there are a lot of puzzles in it, and uh, riddles, and stuff like that, which I was making up myself as I went along. There are numerical puzzles, logic puzzles, word puzzles. It's great fun, but I was done. I had thought of every plot twist in into eight books." and then i said what am i going to do next and then i then i reached back to my science education because i had protested majorly when my parents said i should do engineering but it's it's a sort of um, you know it comes with the territory kind of thing if you are a middle class child growing up in bangalore in the 80s and 90s you were expected to do engineering or medicine it was all, almost as if there were no other professions at all so i had done engineering and in the moment i finished engineering i sort of left to be, join a children's magazine and started writing for children because that was my goal always that was my passion and but now now that i had finished writing this whole series of books i reached back and said to my science education and i said ha huh, maybe this is a good time to write something about science so i wrote a book on popular science okay it's called how what if the earth stopped spinning and 24 other mysteries of science and i kid you not that was the, actually the first time that i actually understood many basic concepts in science which i hadn't understood while i was in school studying them and as an adult when i approached them suddenly they became clearer and i said wow this is what one must be doing you know like you know demystifying things for children so that they don't get intimidated because they actually all subjects any kind of learning is a lot of fun the fun of discovery is amazing there's no subject in the world that is boring if you approach it with a curious mind an open heart you know and without feeling fear if you approach it as a friend and say tell me tell me what wisdom you have every subject has a lot of wisdom in it so and a lot of fun and everything so i'd finished that then i was like okay now again i'm at a loss what do i what do i do next and my editor who had edited my tara not series she says Oh I have the best idea for you you know I have a great idea this is what you should do next and I'm like sure tell me because I have I'm out of ideas tell me what do you think I should write about and she says you should write and I'm waiting with bated breath what exciting subject will she give me you should write about the gita for children and my jaw sort of hit the floor and my <laughs> eyeballs sort of rolled out of their sockets and I'm like are you serious I can't write about the gita for ch- children I, I I can't I don't even know anything about the text I mean my really my only introduction to it was in high school when one of the teachers because I had a good memory she made me recite some verses from the gita for a competition that's that's all that was my uh, basic engagement with it and the other thing was of course I had read the amar sutra katha called the gita that's all nothing more than that so I said no 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 and she said but why and I said actually it was my fear that i didn't know anything about it and how would i write about this revered venerable text that everybody places on a pedestal and people take years they go to the gita classes for years and after so many years they say we have just unraveled one layer of it and i'm like how am i who has no introduction to it going to sit and do this for an impressionable young audience what if i do it wrong what if i misinterpret it what will happen to the kids who are reading this so i should not be interested with the responsibility of it so it was a fear really but i covered it up with excuses very much like arjuna various excuses mm-hmm. to hide your fear and my excuses were things like 
no, no, the Gita is not meant for children. Come on. I've only seen retired people reading it. Why would I write that for children? Then second excuse, oh, but I'm a cool author. I write about cool stuff. I mean, who writes about musty old texts? I don't want to be slotted in that category as somebody who writes about scripture for children. I'm not that kind of person. I'm not that religious type. So all kinds of excuses just to avoid taking on a challenge that I was intimidated by. And then for some reason that I cannot yet fathom, my editor decided to push me. She just would not let me be. She kept saying, no, no, come on, you must at least give it a try. Just try it, just try it. Why don't you want to do it? And in the end, she threw me a challenge. She said, she also didn't know very much about the Gita, by the way. She, so she couldn't even tell me that, no, no, it's meant for everyone. It has a lot. She didn't know. So she said, okay, I'll throw you, I'm putting a challenge out to you. How can you say you won't do it without even reading it? How can you have mm -hmm. all these preconceived notions without trying it out? You know, is, isn't that against your religion? So I said, yeah, that is sort of against my religion as a science background. I cannot say I don't want to do it or I know things about it without actually trying it out. I have to do some empirical analysis and things like that. So she said, okay, take a month. Find, the, find a copy of the Gita, but I didn't know Sanskrit. So, okay, find a good commentary, read it, really apply yourself to the task. And after that, at the end of a month, if you come back and tell me that it's absolutely meant for people over 65 or that it's some kind of a sexist, patriarchal text or it's casteist or, you know, all those, I said, what if it is that? What if it is this? You know, I'm not going to whitewash it for children. All this drama I did. And she said, yes, OK, fine, I will take your word for it. But at least read it once, you know, with your full heart and mind, with an open mind. You are the one who's always saying that one must approach every subject. So I said, sure, that that's fair, you know, fair enough. So I went off to an aunt of mine by marriage and she was very familiar with the Gita and, and she was a cool person also. So I knew she wouldn't give me some religious angle to it. So I, I went to her and she also taught physics. She also taught classical music, all that. So then she took out this uh, chart paper and she sat with it and she said, okay, let's do a mind map. What happens in chapter one? What happens in chapter two? And so she sort of did a visual telling of it to me, how the parts fit together, etc. And I was like, mm -hmm. okay. And one of the things in the, uh, in, while we were talking, one of the things she mentioned was, and you know, Krishna and Arjuna are best friends. You know that, right? Yes. And that yes. sort of hit home. I said, they're best friends. You know, I didn't, we had not realized that till then. Because all mm -hmm. the Gita Upadesha pictures show Krishna with his Abhaya Hasta blessing him. You know, mm -hmm. like. It's more like uh, Arjun is surrendering to Krishna. Surrendering, that is the mentor, basic mentee, image. you know, Guru, Shishya, that kind of feel whenever you look at that picture. Right. And that is right. the most overarching picture that is the picture that comes to mind when you think about the Gita Upadesha. you know Krishna I mean Arjuna kneeling Krishna standing up blessing him so I said oh they're best friends and she said yeah they were like BFFs best friends for life forever and they did everything together and I said so the Gita is basically a conversation between two best friends and she said yeah and suddenly something clicked and I said if it if, if that is what it is however philosophical that conversation is I can probably make a story out of it for children. You know, it's after all, it's two friends chatting. That's what it is. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. then I sort of, my mind opened a little and I took the commentaries that she gave me and she said, we'll meet after a week again. We'll discuss where you've gotten and, you know, if you have any doubts, etc." I never went back to her. I took those commentaries. I went home. I began to read in that new frame of mind and I was hooked. I was completely riveted by the story, by the philosophy, by what Krishna was saying. It felt like he was saying something that I had always believed, but nobody had validated for me because the world seemed to think differently from that. And the world always seemed to be going in some other direction. And I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. And by the end of the month, I had changed my tune to why has no one ever made me read this text? My work, my life would have been so much better growing up if I had this Krishna as my friend throughout, you know. And I, I really felt that. And I then, then it was like I have to tell this story to children. I have to. You know, every child should have access to this, this, this text. And 
So then I began to write and that's how I came to the Gita, you know, and it was such a joy to put it together because it felt so natural. I really now when I look at it, I see it can't be me that has written it, surely, because it feels like those words just came out of somewhere that I was just being used as a channel. And, you know, so, yeah, that's how I came to the Gita.